Yo, I could teach you how to kill without choking, stabbing, or shooting. Just walk past someone who's dying and do this. And it's funny, I'm stuck instructing this tough class, but I just passed. I was, I was not the good Samaritan, I was the priest who just passed to can't understand why he's only washing his hands after taking his blood back. But here's the lesson. Death is the equivalent to life when life is unmentioned. So scratch the strife and the tension. You might as well pull them to the side, look them in the eye and tell them, I want you to die. And if they're struggling and desperate for a word of life to survive, just keep your mouth closed. Now that's homicide. But check me, most Christians are so eager to open their mouths to bless me, but when I'm struggling with sin, they, they hold the truth back, pat me on the back gently and tell me something sweet because they don't want to offend me. Too friendly. But at that point, it was so necessary for me to repent. See, I was driving on grace while my tank was on empty. Why only bash violence when silence is so deadly? And scripture says our, our tongues hold the power of life and death, and, and that helps. But couldn't we ever use our powers to bring life to someone else if we just think it but never speak it? then death will volunteer itself, so... Shh, don't mention it. Shh, just roll with it. Shh, it's the generation of hush. Hush mode-ism. And it's ruling us. And you can trust that people are thirsting for the living water, so why? Bones. In this valley, we are all Ezekiel's. God needs us to speak to his people. Shall they live? I don't know. Because honestly, if I'm not speaking life into you, I'm killing you. I see some of you are feeling the same type of conviction I'm feeling too. Because if I had an adjective to describe the type of killers we become, it would be serial. I'm serious, just look at us. Even in our personal lives, we've, we've hidden behind our lies so many times that our hearts have a hard time convincing our minds that everything is just fine. So because of our pride, we keep our lips sealed and pretend that we're minds, not knowing that our audience is potentially blind. But my God speaks prayer. And it's only difficult if you can't see what he did for you. So I don't care what they did to you. Know how much it gets to you. Regardless of who disrespected, rejected, or neglected you, slept with you, and sexually transmitted disease infected you, no matter who, what, where, when, why, or how, they spiritually or physically molested you, raped you, betrayed you, spit in your face just to show you how much they hate you despite what they did against you. If you take two seconds and think about how you've offended God, it should make you understand how much you deserve death just as much as they do. So if they hurt you, let them know. Speak forgiveness, let it go, cause my brethren, you should know that holding a grudge is the same as holding a gun with intentions of having somebody rested in peace, so why do you think they say speak now or forever hold your click click peace? You know, Sometimes we can be like old TVs with antennas that, that can't receive a signal from above, so we shh. When God wants you 
to transmit that big picture with love. So do not let fear remote control you. Because no matter how much static is in your view on Christ's station, it's never cute to be mute and thaw you. So I dare you to be different. Because by faith I've made a decision that even if I was somehow placed in a prison, feet tied up, hands cuffed, face duct taped up, I would summon my faith in the Christ who saves us. Through the manifestations of my heart's meditations, I initiate communication with my brain and translate that information to my nerves and my veins, sending words to my epidermis and surface in case my lips couldn't release my statements. I nod, twitch, wiggle, and wink you towards salvation. I'm saying. destroy it in the name of Jesus. You are now granted freedom to life and not just to have it but to speak it. Just allow God to breathe it. Your CPR is needed. So if anyone is ever seeking for life through the power of your words, I pray and I wish that I never see anyone go because Christ took lashes of the whip like what shit, what shit. I'm not talking about the regular whip, the type of whip that when inflicted it causes your flesh to rip and compels you to go. So you never have to go. And now that we know that God has chosen that our spiritual reproductive organs be manifested by our words through our lips, when we're speaking, supernaturally we're conceiving by our words, through our lips. So how can life continue to exist when my sisters keep them closed and my brothers keep them zipped? So for the sake of life, I beg you, Open your mouth and speak.